All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be doing a slate preview for, I guess, day one of the NHL playoffs, or at least day one with respect to a real slate. And I'm going to try to do one uh, whenever there is a slate with three, four games until it you know, gets down to the amount of teams where there are not that many games. Had a really, really good NHL season this year and a really good playoff season last year. And we're also going to probably do some showdown this year. Um, again, that was a big hit for me last year. So I'm going to continue to, to do some of that. And thematically with hockey, it's very similar, I guess, um, to the NBA, where during the course of the regular season, you'll see, you know, they really try to, I don't want to say manage minutes, but they, they, they spread the minutes out quite a bit. Um, as you get into the playoffs, I mean, you really need your guys on the ice. Um, I know with that said, it's also a big, long, ruling seven game series across, you know, what's it, round of 16, 8, 4, and 2, you know what I mean? 16, 8, 4, and 2. So you got to get through just a whole bunch of games. So uh, it's, it's not exactly like the NBA. You can't play your guys the whole game. But I do think that the projections on the studs are going to be slightly under projected just because of the way projections operate. They just take a way too much, not way too much, but they take a, almost everything from the regular season. I mean, which certainly makes sense. I mean, where else are you going to project from? But in the playoffs, you know, look, they're going to, like anything else, you're going to go to your stars um, as much as possible. So all else being equal, that is probably what you want to do is make sure that, that you don't get too cutesy about, about your builds. I mean, you want to play the guys that are, you know, the, the, the best players. Um, and it might, may seem sort of juvenile, but that's the way it is in, in, in playoff sports, you know, basketball, hockey, whatever. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, Similar to the way we do most NHL slates, I'm going to operate off of both the DraftKings app, my projections, and Sabersim. So I do think Sabersim is a, a really good tool specifically for hockey, just because the way, you know, you need to really maximize your correlation as much as possible without, you know, going too off the wall. And I feel as though doing that by hand is very, very difficult. Um, and, and, and once again, Saberson does have the, you know, correlation data and it's all built into their models when they build the lineups for you. So I, I, I really feel as though that for hockey, um, it's, it's an extremely good sport for Saberson to help you out. Um, I will say, though, that ownership is not quite as tight uh, in, in hockey as some of the other sports, ownership being my projections. Um, I think that relative to the other sports, I actually think the hockey projections are probably some of the weakest. Now, not that they're bad. I mean, I'd certainly put put my aggregation model up against any others uh, favorably, but the, the, the deviation between ownership is, does can be somewhat wide. Um, so uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, so let's just get, let's get into it. So there are four games, Boston, Carolina, Tampa, Toronto, St. Louis, Minnesota, and LA Edmonton as the, as the two hammers later. And let me pull up my projections. Again, I can't do this every slate just because this is, this is for premium members. So, I mean, I, I can't just do this all the time, but every once in a while I'll, I will do this. And what we're doing is we're ranking them by, by sheet value score, which is kind of a combination of points per dollar and just raw points, which, which you know, especially for hockey, it, it's a pretty good, I think, I mean, it's a pretty good combination of the two. Once again, I think some sports, the sheets value score is a little weaker um, as far as something to utilize um, than other sports. But I think hockey is actually, you know, pretty good. Um, 
So the first thing that I'll look at, again, I just, just gonna eyeball this. And, and I see the first thing is that I see three Carolinas right at the top right, of, of the value rate. So instinctively, it seems to be kind of where you wanna go. But as you'll also see, <laughs> Looking pretty quickly, uh, the projected ownership of these of these fellows is 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 pretty pretty absurd. Um, even even on a short slate, I mean, to make a hockey player 65, 70 percent is just boy oh boy that's asking for it. Um, you know you don't score all that often, so I don't know. I'm probably inclined to to, to pull some ownership fade on this slate if if this is the way it's going to be. But we'll see. The next thing I'll notice is, I guess, the Edmontons, right? So you have McDavid, Hyman, and then, you know, obviously correlation with, with the goalies is not, not the worst. So this is actually pretty good, too. And you'll see that the – I don't know how this is possible. Once again, I have Connor McDavid at 7%. That's just not going to happen. So you just check back for your ownership uh, projections a little bit later. But just kind of judging this without that, yeah, those two Edmonton guys are, are a good place to start a lineup. And also these two Tampas. Um, well, Killorn is just with the goalie. I don't see a lot of skaters up here. You have to go down to Kucherov before you, you get to them. So I think – I guess there's a reason why all these guys are generating all this ownership, these Carolinas, because they are rated really high. But that's a, that's a, big, that's a big ownership uh, – which we call a big ownership uh, matzo, matzo ball to swallow. Let's put it that way. Um, goalies, I do see the Carolina Edmondson goalie is standing out as, and you don't see a goalie stand out that often like this. So this is this is what's driving all this. You know, you get the goalie standing out, you got the skater standing out. So Carolina Edmondson look to be the two teams that at least from a projection basis are, are going to be where people go. Look at Tony DeAngelo. What is it? Seventy five percent. Is this true? That can't be the case. You know what I think I'm getting? I think I'm getting. Um, I might be getting some stray ownership from the showdown. Is that possible? Because this just seems like an awful lot. Let me just look at this. Sorry to take up your time with this, but I, I just want to see. I mean, is it just possible these guys are just that that cheap? They're going to be 75% on. I just don't think so. In a four game or yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to get back to that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I only do have one model for the for the ownership up there. So well. They're probably going to be popular. I don't think they're going to be that popular. Anyway, they do rate to be the best plays right now. Um, Carolinas and Edmondsons. Um, so from a hand-built perspective, that's what you probably try to do. So like, for example, and I want to show you the difference between what happens when you hand-build versus when you save yourself. So let's just say you're going to play the Carolinas and the guys that we were that we saw, were, let's just let's just play the goalie. Ranta. And that Ranta, and then we'll play Wing will play Shvednikov over here, Shvednikov. Then we'll play Trocek. And we'll play Aho also. And then we will play who are the rest from that line. That's the thing. I mean, that, that's all it gives you as good plays are those three. Oh, then there's the Tony D'Angelo and Trevenian. So let's, let, let's throw them all in. Actually, let's not throw them all, but let's throw the other guys. Let's throw in the Edmonds. Let's put in Connor McDavid, if you can, and Zach Hyman to start. So right now, if you play those four, three highly rated Carolinas and the two highly rated Edmontons, you're left with 3,800 a person, 3,800 a player. And so what I would do if I were hand building is go back to my sheet here and see if there are any good 3,800s in here. So you do have Taylor Hall, looks like a strong 3,900. You have Brandon Saad, 2,900. 
What would be nice is if you had somebody from these teams, right? So I would give up some projection equity to come down, get to some of this, somebody from the same team. But unfortunately, it just doesn't look that way. You could play Hop, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, or you could play Tyson Barry if you wanted. Um, actually, you'd have to play so the, the defenseman from Edmonton. So if you put Tyson Barry in, now you have 3650. So you can do this. So you, you could play with Carolina and Edmonton and either play a 4 3 or a 5 2 or something like that, or, or fill this in with one offs. And with hand builds, that's probably what I would do. You know, I'd put Carolina up here, uh, that goalie over here, you could replace him with Mike Smith. And, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. So it'd just be a question of where your one off would come from because you, you can't play everybody from the same team from the same two teams. Um, now let's compare that to, to what would happen if we used SaberSim to build lineups, right? Because when you're hand building, this is what you're gonna get. I mean, you'll end up with Carolina, you'll end up with Edmonton, and let's compare that again to if we use SaberSim. Now, unfortunately, SaberSim, as it is right now on the site, is a little wonky. So I'm gonna do it the, the long way and just upload. The projections from my raw files right to SaberSim. When, when, when everything's running right, probably later on today, you'll be able to just see them right there on the on the TrueDFS site, but right now you have to kind of do it the long way. Okay, so let's build lineups. Let's build, say, well, for the hell of it, let's build 150 lineups. Out of, we'll say 1,500. We'll use their default sliders. We we'll use their 20 max default sliders. That's kind of a trick I'll do sometimes, but I don't want that much variance. I'll leave the 20 max sliders on, even though I'm playing in the 150 max, and I'll build just like a whole bunch of lineups. This is gonna take a little bit, but not that big a deal. While, while we're waiting on this, let me go back and see if I missed anything with, um, with respect to standouts. Um, not really, I mean, once you get the Taylor Hall is kind of a one-off, but I guess you could you could make the argument that Bergeron and, and Marshan and Pasternak are just as good because at least they're all three of them are on the same line. They're all together in these projections. So you could definitely make that case that although the Edmontons and, and the Carolinas are ranked higher, like on an individual basis, some of them, the fact that you got all three of these guys here, I think that makes for a really strong idea. So while we're waiting on that, let's let, let's let's do something different. So instead of that, let's do what I just said. Let's play Pasternak, Marchand, and the benefit of this is you get to play the Taylor Hall, right? Um, who is the other one from here? Bergeron, Marchand, Pasternak. First writers. So you could play do this and correlate this with, with this goalie in the same game. And you could you could actually turn this into one hell of a game stack, actually. You know, you can go ahead and play the cheapo center like this. Put him up over here, actually. You could put Trocek over there. And it I don't need to fill the rest of this in for you, but but this is a very easy type of lineup that you can play. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I prefer something like this to the, to the other one because you get all this Boston correlation and they're good plays and you can play the Carolina guys really easy. And then if you want, if you don't want to get too um, whatever, you could go back and play that Edmonton defenseman that you like, uh, the Tyson Berry, as a one-off. That, that would work. So I think from hand building, this is where I go. Let's let's see what what Saberson comes up with. So with Saberson, 
The first thing I will notice is that of the 150 lineups, you don't get a lot of, four, of, of, of full stacks, which is very rare for, for Saber Sim. Um, I guess just because it's a four game slate, it's just not as important to get those, you know, those, those pure stacks in there. So that's really interesting. That's, that's one thing. The other thing is let's take a look at the teams. And as I suspected, right. Uh, so you get almost no Carolina, you get almost no Boston and you know, you get the majority of it as being Toronto. Kind of amazing, right? And even if you sort it by say by five stacks, you get no Carolina, you get no Boston, and you'll end up getting a whole bunch of Toronto. And the reason for that, if you haven't figured it out yet, is because the ownership that they're assigning to Toronto is extremely low. Right. So I don't know if this is the case. These guys at one percent is just not gonna happen. But that's what what that's what Saberson does for you, right? When you rank these things by Saber score, it is going to, you know, generate a whole bunch of these low owned situations. You know, like if I re-rank these by projected score, for example, now is where you get these three Carolinas. That makes sense, right? Because they do project the best, but the problem is, is that when we assign this type of ownership, they're not going to show up as good tournament plays. And when I say tournament plays, that's when you rank them by Sabre score, you get the, you know, the, are the good tournament plays. So um, I think what we've learned in this kind of early look is that because my early ownership projections are really poor at this point, you, you, you could probably ignore this. Now you can't ignore it with respect to process, but with respect to actual lineup builds, I mean, like, there's no way that those ownerships are good. Um, I'm just saying. Um, if they were, then like I said, I mean, you tell me I'm getting, you know, 1.7% on Mitch, Mitch Marner. I would say, yeah, that's, that's LFG. You know, if you tell me I'm getting 78% on those Carolina guys. Yeah. I don't want them either. So that, that's one of the things that Saberson can do for you. You know, as long as you get a good ownership projection, it can do, it can make you really good high upside lineups. But again, it's garbage in, garbage out. If you don't give it good, good ownership projections to work with, then it's just going to come up with stuff like this. Um, now, again, you know, You can use Saber Sims projections. You can use mine or whatever. But right now, I think the only ownerships that I have are Saber Sims, which is why these are kind of showing up this way. Um, and as the day goes on, I'll you know I'll, I'll build my models a little bit better, and I'll have I'll have better projections. And then you could just kind of rerun this. But um, that that's where I'm at, like right now. And again, this is you guys want you want transparency. I do want to play the hockey slate tonight. And I think it's important to get an overview of what's going to look good. And Carolina is going to look good. Um, and Edmonton is probably going to look good. And you want to know why Carolina is going to look good? Look at that. I mean, they have a 4.4 total. I mean, they're going to look good. Um, and I do think that this game can be game stacked quite, uh, quite nicely, you know? Um, but I don't know. I've, I've been around um, hockey long enough to know that if you overload on this game and you don't have a really, really huge score by the time this is done, you are going to be really worried about Edmonton <laughs> uh, later. Because when they get it going, man, they really can get it going. Um, and the other thing, obviously, you'll notice is the one game that we didn't, I didn't mention at all so far was St. Louis, Minnesota, which actually had, does have a higher you know, game total than Edmonton. And the Edmonton. So um, it's going to be an interesting slate. One thing I will encourage you is to come back later at about hopefully about six my time where I'll hopefully get a much higher, you know, much tighter uh, set of projections. And then if we're, if we go live, which we will, 
but I'll, I have to promise I'm going to dedicate a few minutes to the to the hockey slate tonight uh, after we Bobby and I do the baseball. But uh, that'll do it, and good luck, and I hope to uh, you know again follow up later.